will not deal with the key rulings. Let's see what is this judgment. So the issue was in case of CIF imports, the, there was a deemed law under GST which demanded uh, a tax under reverse charge by the importer. In this situation, the actual shipping contract, the actual freight contract was between the foreign supplier and foreign recipient. So there was a debate whether there is actually an import of service or not, and should the GST actually be paid under the GST law in India. So this matter traveled to Supreme Court. Supreme Court clarified that yes, in some shape, importer uh, is a recipient. It says that importer is recipient since the place of supply in terms of relevant GST provision is in India. They have discussed one technical point where they have said that under Pipe 4, uh, the source to power to notify importer is available. They have held that there is a sufficient territorial nexus when imports are made in India. They have also held that whatever are the recommendations of GST Council, those are not binding on the states and centers. They have discussed the concept of composite supply and they, have, and they have held that if a GST is being levied on the service portion in case of CIF contract, then it will violate the concept of composite supply under Section 8. On the ground of dual levy, uh, uh, and at the end, the Supreme Court held that this levy is un un unconstitutional. So no GST needs to be paid on CIF imports. Now, what is our take? In our view, Section 5.3 should be read strictly. The court, so the Supreme Court has said that it is covered under Section 5.4. But in our view, Section 5.4 does not expand the scope of recipient. There can only be one recipient, which is actually the foreign supplier. Also, the transaction is a single supply, not a composite supply. So to that extent, the finding of Supreme Court is not good. This will also have an impact on the metals which are pending under service tax uh, because the government with the revenue will, or the taxpayer will try to use this judgment to you know, uh, build up their case. What is the way forward since the levy is considered to be an unconstitutional? So till the time we have a time limit for issuance of credit note, Wherever taxpayer has paid GST under reverse charge, they can consider issuing credit note to that extent. And for the past period, they can consider filing the refund. The general period of refund is two years under the GST, but uh, uh, there is another debate whether this is uh, when the levy is considered as unconstitutional. Can the normal limitation period of three years under limitation law should apply or? The period of two years will apply, so it it depends on the interpretation. But uh, uh, that's also one of the area which needs to be looked upon. For future, taxpayer can stop paying GST uh, basis this uh, favorable ruling. There is also a possibility that some retrospective amendment may happen under the GST law after the Supreme Court judgment, since government has levied reverse charge on CIF contract under service tax and under GST as well. So they might want to continue with this concept and they will bring, they might bring a retrospective amendment in the law. So there is another important ruling pronounced by Supreme Court on the same day in case of Northern Operating System. This deals with the employee secondment concept so in this scenario, there was a seconded employee in India, which was on the foreign entity payroll for the continuation of social security and retirement benefit. Indian entity was employing the employee for all practical purposes, and they also issued an employment rater to the seconded employee. Foreign company was remunerating employee salary, bonus, social benefit, and other expenses. An Indian entity was reversing all these expenses to foreign company without a markup. Uh, the terms of the contract said that employment with foreign entity will cease during the period when it is with India 
and the terms of terms and conditions of employment contract in india will will be enforced to the extent the employee is operating in india the role of foreign entity was restricted to payroll service uh, provider only now what is the observation of supreme court now supreme court started with the theory of the substance over form they said that direction and control test which the indian company is doing is not is irrelevant it is not the single determinative factor to decide whether there is an employer employee relationship or there is a import of service via manpower contract between the foreign company and the indian company the supreme court said that indian entity has operational and functional control that is only for the purpose of performance of task given to the employee at the end of this economic period the employee returns to the foreign entity and his employment then continues with the foreign entity the challenge the existence of indian entity it says that it's it's a quick quick pro quo between indian entity and foreign entity as indian entity gets the benefit of expert knowledge of the employee at the end the supreme court has held that uh, it is not the employer employee relationship between indian company and the secondary employee it is a service between indian entity and foreign entity where foreign entity is providing services to indian entity via an secondment of an employee this has shaken the earlier favorable decisions in case of volkswagen and computer science corporation they have said that you know these are irrelevant to decide its judgment the supreme court concluded service tax is liable under the reverse charge as foreign entity is providing manpower supply service is to indian entity the tax payer also argued that the matter is revenue neutral but on that point supreme court said that this argument is irrelevant because if we went into this theory then all the reverse charge transactions can be put uh under non compliance and everybody will start taking shelter under the revenue neutrality theory since the matter involved interpretation of law supreme court agreed that extended period of limitation is not applicable in this case we conducted a poll on this question as well whether this ruling has a bearing on the existing contract between the companies the answer is yes because it is very common between indian company and multinational company where it has overseas companies that there are a lot of employees seconded in india so this decision under service tax is equally applicable under gst because the taxing entries are very similar most importantly it will also have an impact on the income tax positions adopted at the moment since this seconded employee was treated as employee so all the compliances from prema rpi and income tax was done considering this to be uh, an indian employee the moment we consider this to be an import of services then all these positions needs a relook now what is the way forward in our view this judgment is very fact specific it can still be distinguished even today depending upon the terms of the agreement of the secondment contract so which means every secondment contract uh, may not be affected by this judgment we have to look into the facts of each secondment contract and then understand to what extent this judgment impacts this secondment contract on few grounds in our view this judgment is incorrect it is incorrect to say that indian company controls and compliance as employer this judgment fails to consider the concept of dual and joint employment even the department has recognized this concept in the past they also issued a draft circular under service tax law where they have considered this a joint employment concept and said that if this is uh, if this is the case of joint employment then it 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 is a case of employer employee relationship revenue neutrality was one of the important point which should have been considered 
extended period is not invocable that is the correct proposition that's been laid down by supreme court and technically in our view service tax was not liable in the present case since it was a clear cut case of employer employee relationship between the indian entity and the seconded employee now it is possible that since this judgment has a very wide implication for an industry in the past the government has issued circulars and instructions on those issues which has a wider implication like after the decision of ultra tech on gts services credit after the listing house judgment on the classifications of auto component part parts so we can expect a similar circular or instructions from the government on the point of this judgment and how to treat uh, this secondment of an employee from a gst standpoint so what is the way forward under service tax since most of the period is time but only 3 months are being left so that is the period which can be uh, if there are open notices uh, already between the department and tax payer then only for this 3 months there could be a possible demand matter is relevant under gst so the all the employment contracts the government contracts needs to be reanalyzed to decide the gst liability under the reverse charge uh, there is another uh, point which needs to be considered a should we consider paying gst under protest for the past period and claim credit to avoid any litigation from the department if yes then what should be the value adopted for this transaction so this also needs a deliberate consideration for future to avoid the potential dispute wherever credit is available the taxpayer can consider paying gst under reverse charge and claim credit also uh, the taxpayer via some industry forum can consider filing a representation before the cbic seeking a clarification since this can this judgment can open a pandora box for the past period as well as the future period and in parallel the impact of this judgment under income tax law also needs to be analyzed so with this i hand over this session to my colleague saurav who will take it forward thanks gorav for explaining these two important rulings from supreme court uh, besides these two rulings we have other rulings as well where the various courts have dealt upon and have laid down various principles which are relevant for future transactions as well starting with one of the very debatable issues relating to payment of tax by supplier as a precondition to claim credit calcutta high court has come up again with a judgment in the case of sanjita kundu in this case the issue was that the supplier's registrations were cancelled retrospectively and therefore the department sought to deny the gst or deny the itc at the hands of the buyer in this case the transactions were supported by genuine documents all the payments were made through banking channels and when the transactions were made these registrations were active in that context the court has remanded back the matter with direction that if everything is found to be genuine benefit of itc is to be extended to the bona fide petitioner now similar rulings have already come in past as i was saying in calcutta high court only there was a ruling of lgw industries where similar position was held uh, further in case of dy bithal by madras high court as well the court remanded back the matter and asked the revenue to ex examine whether suppliers uh, the transaction has been genuine or not and whether the buyer has been a bona fide buyer at all or not now this issue has a lot of repercussions in past 2 3 years uh, the department has been very aggressive on claiming uh, these itc back from the buyers itself and they are pressurizing buyers on to on to uh, reverse all these itcs that have been claimed in the past period moving on we have another judgment of vedanta limited this relates to refund of igst which was paid on exports there was additional igst also which was paid later because of the variation in rates in london metal exchange and that led to uh, uh, a payment of tax twice uh, one for the real igst transaction or the real value and second for the variation in rates that had that had occurred and then department rejected the refund claim on the basis that the system does not enable 
any any refund like uh, on account of variations as also that manual refunds are not permissible in that context the department relied upon previous judgment of uh, of gujarat high court in amit cotton industries and they directed to process the refund and also directed that similar uh, contingencies shall always be figured out and shall all, always be taken care of by the department even if the refunds are being filed only online these scenarios should be taken care of in in exceptional circumstances moving on we have another judgment of nikunjam constructions of kerala high court of service tax uh, in this case the petitioner challenged this scn because it was not uh, there was no pre notice consultation issued in this case department contended that it is only directory in nature and not a statutory requirement to conduct this pre notice consultation the court held that pre notice consult consultation is a mandatory process and reiterated that circulars issued by department are binding in nature so there are multiple circulars on similar points which which basically uh, laid down the proposition that pre notice consultation is mandatory particularly in cases which involves fraud suppression of acts as well and therefore the scn was set aside and liberty was granted to department to issue pre pre uh, notice consultation as well as scn on the same subject matter moving on we have another ruling of gulati enterprises uh, in this case the petitioner again challenged the scn which was issued without pre notice consultation procedure being followed uh, department contended that taxpayer had tendered voluntary statement that they they would require to pay the amount or rather they had voluntarily committed as to payment of the amount as well and therefore they had denied the pre notice consultation in this case the department also took a position that prior to 15 10 2020 uh the pro provision which was used uh, or the the terminology which was used in the provision was shall and thereafter it was specifically made as may and therefore it has no more remained a mandatory process and and therefore pre notice consultation will not be fatal to their case however the court held that voluntary statement cannot substitute a statutory notice and therefore the scn was set aside with liberty to initiate fresh proceedings by the department moving on uh, we have the ruling of abi technology of madras high court in this case petitioner had inadvertently reported exports as taxable supplies instead of zero rated supplies in gst r 3b and due to this wrong reporting the refund of the petitioners were denied which was challenged before the madras high court the madras high court took a view that rule 96 of the cgst rules cannot be strictly applied to deny legitimate export incentive to exporters in in the sense that when the exports have been physically made and practically for all purposes all the documentations are ready and they have been taken care of then merely reporting wrongly in the gst r 3b shall not lead to denial of a of a substantive benefit as such and the directions were given to procure export data and grant refund refund of the tax paid on valid exports moving on we have the very important case of munjal manish bhai bhat versus union of india in gujarat high court in this case uh, the challenge was made to the deeming fiction of one third deduction of value of land from total consideration on which gst was payable and this was uh, this valuation mechanism was issued through a notification therefore this notification was only subject to challenge as being ultra vice of the provisions of the law itself in this case the development contract provided for a separate consideration towards sale of land and construction services the court held that schedule 3 of cgst act excludes any sale of land from gst whether developed or not further deeming fiction can be applied only where actual value is not ascertainable and should not be contrary to statute so in this case since actual value of of land was available with the with the taxpayer therefore this this concept of one third notional value should not be applied in these cases and and therefore the the provision or the notification was read down to mean that it will be an optional uh, it will be optional in the hands of taxpayers to really adopt the mechanism on the basis of one third value of land or the actual value of land as as they may feel right or wherever the values are available so this is how it has been interpreted one of the important highlights of the gujarat high court judgment is that they uh, the the uh, taxpayer had argued that the provision uh, the valuation mechanism can, cannot be provided through a notification which concept was later diluted by the judgment of the mohit minerals which gorav dealt earlier uh, this is one of the uh, interesting cases in service tax regime there was a final order passed by settlement commission imposing tax liability interest and penalty on the ground that the liability under reverse charge was paid by taxpayers in 50 50 ratio 
contrary to the law that provided for a ratio of 75 25 the court held that as tax has reached the exchequer in entirety short payment cannot be alleged and therefore dual payment cannot be cannot be taken from from the taxpayers as such this is one of the few rulings or in fact one of the one of the rulings of this subject matter this is the first time uh, the courts have gone into to allow uh, the the benefit to the taxpayers when the taxes have already been paid in whatever ratio that may be another case and very important here to highlight is that uh, summons were issued to managing director of the company instead of its authorized representative. There was no evidence that the company was not cooperating or presence of managing director was actually required. In that scenario, uh, the court struck down the summons. They said that senior personnel cannot be summoned on a regular basis. They directed to issue a modified summons. And this was also the court relied upon the instructions issued by uh, CBIC in well, well in 1987 where it said that it should not be a regular process to call for a senior official or a, or a person like managing director of the company on a regular basis. And therefore, uh, this, this ruling will extend a lot of benefits because the department has been aggressively uh, issuing summons and have diluted the concept of summons in all senses. So this is the last ruling. Uh, happy to share that this was argued by Nitya Tax Associates itself in the case of Ericsson India Private Limited. In this case, the payment of customs duty was paid twice because there was an error on the portal. On the first day, the entire duty was paid, which did not reflect on the ICS portal. On the very next day, this duty was paid again uh, through another bank account. And therefore, thereafter, a refund claim was filed belatedly after passing of one year. In that case, it was held that bar of time limitation of one year shall not apply for any excess amount that was paid and that cannot be called as duty as such. So this lays down an important principle that even if I would have assessed the tax as duty, then also if it is excess payment and has been paid by mistake of law or fact, then in such scenarios, uh, the, the time limit of one year shall not apply because the amount that would be deposited would not qualify as duty as such. Thank you for joining this webinar. We will soon be available to you in the next webinar. Thank you.